Hello everyone, this is Ashish and welcome back to Talk 4712. The topic of discussion today is extremely essential for anyone who is having a goal and wants to achieve that goal intentionally. No matter what field, no matter what phase of the career you are at, you require a plan to achieve what you want to achieve. I still remember planning for hours back in 2014 when I was in college. At that time, my goal was to get into IIT Bombay. I prepared very well. I listened to people who had already done what I wanted to do. I worked hard. I planned well. But ultimately, I failed at Gate 2016. I was not able to get IIT Bombay. Now, what do I say at this phase? Do I say that plans don't really work and in future I'm going to just run blind? No, I just said that maybe I was not efficient at planning and maybe this time I need to make a better plan. I gave myself one full year and I gave myself another plan but throughout the journey I saw the world and I decided that I actually don't want to get into IIT Bombay. I want to get something which was much better according to me. That was ISRO. I've worked extremely hard for that, planned again for that, stuck to this, to this plan but after one year, I was successful to get into IIT Bombay, but I failed in ISRO examination. Now, what do I do now? Do I say, should I discard this planning idea? No, I just said, I require a better planning. So I gave myself six more months and said that I'm going to go for another job, get that job. And while I'm at that job, I'm going to keep on working for ISRO. That's exactly what I did. Gave myself six, six months and gave myself another plan. I was able to successfully get that job of BARC. I got in there and immediately when I got in there, I started to prepare again for ISRO. Another plan, another goal, ISRO December 2017. Then again, I failed at that examination. Even though I planned very well, even though I stuck to my plan, even though I worked extremely hard, what do I do next? Okay, this plan was also not sufficient. Let us make another plan. Give myself six more months. One another exam of ISRO is coming up in April. Plan very well, stuck to the plan and executed things as well as I could have. And then I cracked ISRO examination. So what do I actually want to say over here? Most of the plans that I've made has two things in common. One, all the plans actually at least failed once. And second one, I ultimately did get what I planned for. It just took a little bit more time. After I got into ISRO, few months of working over there, there's an idea that came into my mind that I actually want to something, start something on my own. I want to start a course of personality development and that is currently something that I'm doing right now. So I need another plan, plan to have proper saving, plan to have proper resources. Once I leave the job, how am I going to manage? And all of this management was not possible at all without planning. If I did not have a plan, I would have failed in just two months after leaving ISRO. So I had plan about everything about what I'm doing right now in every stage of my life I have planned so it is absolutely must for you to plan as well think of it like a treasure map if you want to reach to the treasure you're going to need the map it might be extremely difficult for you to read the map it might be very difficult for you to reach to the treasure using the map but without the map reaching to the treasure is impossible. In the same manner, without a plan, it is impossible for you to reach the goal that you actually intended to reach. So it might be difficult to stick to the plan, but it is absolutely must for you to reach where you actually wanted to reach. Now, success don't really happen by accident. It happens by design. And that design, my friends, is called plans. So in this video, I'm going to concise all the various things that I've learned in past eight years of my planning, how I achieve the goals with proper solid plans. And these are actually very simple. I'm going to break it down to three important aspects. Number one, resource allocation. Number two, execution. And the third one are various levels of planning, layers of planning, which will help you to stick to a particular plan. By the end of this video, I'm also going to discuss various advantages why it is absolutely must for you to have a plan. Let us begin the video. So through my experiences, you must have understood that I've made a lot of plans and a lot of plans have failed, but ultimately all the plans did lead me to where I wanted to be. So what do we actually learn from that? Plans generally fail, but that is the thing you learn to plan better and better as a lot of your plans have failed. You understand what are the mistakes that you did. Maybe you overloaded yourself, maybe you underloaded yourself. But in any cases, we'll have to understand where we want to be 
and where we are right now. Hence comes the resource allocation. So you'll allocate all the resources that you are having. So by looking at where I am right now, you are going to look at what are your resources right now. And then you are going to look at where you actually want to be and is it even feasible for so let us say i'm having a resource of two lakh rupees right now and let us say i'm going to give myself time bound of six months and i want to become richer than jeff bezos that is basically not possible so you are going to look at feasibility but if i look at right now resources if i'm having two lakh rupees in my bank account can i start a course on personality development in let us say eight months Yes, that sounds very feasible or let us say right now I'm a student and I want to crack an examination in next six months then what is the resource right now the resource over there is time and then whatever the resource it might be time or money it depends on how you allocate for the time that you have got in that length in between where you are right now to where you want to be in the future. I'm going to give you both the examples so that it is generalized for all the people first I'm going to give you the example for a student. So let us say you are a student, you want to crack an examination in six months. Then what do you know that in six months, that is the requirement of that examination that you should be done with these 12 subjects. So automatically it comes down to two subjects every month. Granted, all the subjects might be different and there might be different time required for different subjects. Some subjects might require 45 days for you to complete it. Some subjects might require only 10 days for you to complete it. But on an average, you can say that. So you are going to look at where you are right now. Two subjects every month. Let us look at the biggest two subjects and let us find out what I'm going to do right now. Why did I do that? Because looking four months down in the future is much more difficult of what your situation is going to be. There are a lot of variables that you can't really predict, but you can find out what your situation is right now. And you can, to a high probability, understand what your situation will be for next month. So you understand what you have to do in this month. You have to complete two subjects. Let us break it down even further. That means around 15 to 20 days for the first subject that I'm going to do right now. Let us break that subject even further. Let us say there are 10 subjects, uh, sorry, 10 chapters in that particular subject. Then you can bring down to what you have to do this week. Then you have to bring down to what you have to do today. These are the various layers of planning that I'm going to discuss in the third point. But basically this is how you understand of how to make a long-term planning. So you have to have an idea of where you're going to be in six months or where you're going to be in six years or where you're going to be in 10 years, depending on the magnitude of what you're trying to achieve. Bigger things are going to require bigger time, but it is very important for you to have a vision. For example, if Dr. Vikram Sarabhai never had a vision of having a space agency in India right after the freedom, how would ISRO reach the situation that it is in over here? That kind of planning required decades of planning. And that is the kind of visionary Vikram Sarabhai was. And he saw that and he had a particular plan. Same goes with Dr. Homi Baba as well. He also had a plan of creating nuclear power, making India self-dependent on nuclear powers. So he made a plan of three different various stages of reactors, first stage reactor, second stage reactor, and third stage reactor. And he gave that in 1955, in 1960s itself. And right now India is executing that. So plans may be in any magnitude. It might be of six months of you planning to crack an examination and it might be decades of you trying to create something big. But it all starts with starting point, ending point and then you trying to figure out what are your resources right now at the starting point and how you are going to allocate right so this is what you need to keep in your mind i'll give you another example for example i left isro in january 2020 at that time i left it with a vision that somewhere around october i'm going to start a course on personality development i'm doing that right now i'm right now on my second batch so what are the resources that I'm having in January 2020? I'm having a money saved up, which is two lakh rupees, and I'm having this YouTube following, but it was not sufficient because my YouTube following was in careers field. I wanted to start a course in personality development. So I started to focus more on my second YouTube channel where I'm talking about personality development, and I started to build that up. Also what I did, I started three different podcasts, Momentum Podcast, Spacecast Podcast, and Talk and Fire Podcast, which is actually going to be a display of my personality. So people who are listening to me will automatically see that yeah, this guy's personality is good. This guy is having good speaking skills. I can learn something from that. And just when they were thinking about that, I'm going to talk about, yes, there's a seminar that is going on. You can join if you wish. 
And then the next step would be the seminars that I've done, if the results are good, I'm going to showcase that to other people and then it is going to multiply like that. So this is the planning, but initially I had to put in the work of starting these different podcasts, making sure that three podcasts comes every week. So this is the planning and the strategy. Then from this only I'm moving to the second one that is execution. It is extremely important to execute and that is the reason a lot of plans fail is because planning actually gives you a very good feeling because it gives you a feeling that it is achievable which is very very correct but nothing is actually achievable without execution without you working towards that without you sticking to that plan. For example, I gave myself a target that I'm going to crack this examination. This week, I have to complete four different chapters. Then I have to make dead sure that I'll work my best to complete all those four chapters, no matter what. That is called execution. Forcing yourself to do the task that is absolutely necessary for you to reach the long-term goal. Planning without execution is a dream. A dream from which you'll be woken up ruthlessly by the reality. In the next point, which is the layers of planning, I'm going to be talking more about how you should be sticking to your plan. But before that, let us talk about the sponsor of this video. This video has been sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform where millions of people are learning new skill. You can also plan very well to learn a new skill, which is going to be very helpful for you in future. These days, every morning, this is what I'm doing. Going to Skillshare, investing one to two hours of learning new skill. My favorite teachers over there would be Thomas Frank, who is talking a lot about productivity and also Thomas Daher, who is also talking about videography, how he created, he's the editor of a, a YouTube channel, which is having over 5 million subscribers. And through his experience of being an editor for three years, he's teaching over there how you can be a good editor. So right now you can see I'm running three different YouTube channels. So it is a very essential skill for me to learn. There are other courses also available like graphic design, photography, creative writing, animation, filmmaking, marketing, productivity, freelance, entrepreneurship, no matter what you are interested in. Skillshare has something for you. The first thousand people who are going to use the link down in the description box are going to get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. And anyways, it is costing less than $10 every month if you choose to take the annual subscription. There's always something new. I'm using it to the fullest. Every day I get something to learn and the courses are pretty concise and short. In two to three hours, you're going to learn a new skill. For me, photography, videography, and video editing are the best skills that I'm learning right now. And also I'm focusing on productivity a lot. It's a good platform. Go to the link down in the description box and try it. All right, now let's make sure that you stick to the plan that you made. So we are going to talk about layers of planning. The first layer of planning would be long-term planning, something that I've already talked about. You're going to look at the resources, you're going to look at the destination, and then you are going to look at the time that you're having. Let us, for example, take six months, you have to give an examination. So in that six months, you are going to see, okay, January, I'm going to do this, December, I'm going to do this, October, I'm going to do this. Obviously, you won't be able to look at every day of December, you won't be able to predict that. You won't even be able to understand what is going to happen every week. So it will be like a black box. October, let us say I'm going to finish minor subjects. November, I'm going to give subject-wise test series. And December, I'm going to give full end test series. That is a brief idea that you can have. Can you predict this month? To some extent, yes. If you bring it down 12 subjects, six months, then two subjects, one month, that means that one subject in 15 days, that means that one subject in two weeks. So you won't be able to look at the full month properly, but you will be able to look to some extent to the week that you're standing at. So you will be able to understand, let us say seven chapters I have to complete in this week. That means that one chapter every day. So you will be able to bring that long-term planning into short-term planning, and you will be able to predict the next day that you're going to have. So when you do that, you'll be having something we call a to-do list. Now this to-do list will be your best friend when it comes to short-term planning because you are going to assign all the tasks that you're going to do next day over there. You're going to stick that paper or the sticky note on the wall and as you complete those tasks, cut those tasks out. It is going to give you a very good feeling when you cut those tasks and also is going to make sure that you do all the tasks. So all you have to do right now is to stick to what you were supposed to do every day. 
If you do that, if you follow the daily plan properly, your weekly plan will be followed properly. If weekly plans are followed properly, your months are going as you have planned. If your months are going as it is planned, your long-term planning is successful. That is when you achieve the desired objective but also there's every now and then some uncertainties maybe you fall sick for a week maybe something unexpected happens maybe anything happens maybe covid happened so something unexpected happened then how you're going to readjust so that is why we always give something which is called buffer time so if you have to achieve a target in january then you will give yourself one month of buffer time and you will focus on finishing the objective in december itself so while you were making the long term Think of it as a buffer time that is going to pre-pawn whatever you're trying to achieve. And ultimately, you are going to see that that buffer time is going to be extremely useful because there's no life or no path without uncertainties. There's going to be one and thus you are going to plan it properly. Now, let us talk about the advantages which will make it absolutely clear in your head before this video ends that it is absolute must for you to plan. The first one, demotivation. If you don't have a plan, you will be demotivated no matter what. And the problem is lot of demotivated folks don't even know that they are demotivated because they are not having a plan. This is the reason for that. If you're not having a plan, it's basically like you don't even know where you're going. That automatically tells your subconscious that maybe what you're trying to do won't work, which is pretty obvious. If you have to run towards Nepal, if you're running towards Delhi, then you are going to reach the wrong destination. And whether you admit it or not, your subconscious will be knowing that you don't really know what you're doing. So that demotivation comes because of lack of planning. Second one, missing important tasks. If you don't write it down, this is how our brain works. Our brain does not really work in a way that our pencil and paper works, that whatever is written in X comma Y coordinate is going to stay over there for eternity. Brain, something is written at that point, something is going to replace that and you are going to forget about the task that you had to do. Two months down the line, when it is at urgent state, you are going to remember, oh, I had to do that two months ago and I did not do that and now it is too late. Either you are going to allocate more resources to that or you are going to take a hit. But if you write everything on a piece of paper, if everything is documented, then you are not going to miss out because you are going to look at those chart papers every day. This is what I did for the longest of time. I used to make big chart papers, buy it in like 10, 10 rupees, something like that, stick it on the wall and everything was written over there because I do not want to miss out anything. And I do not want to regret in future. The third and the final one would be wasting a lot of time. So the to-do list is the best friend when it comes to utilizing every last second because you will be forced to see what you have to do throughout the day. And if you do not do throughout the day the task that you were assigning, your daily plan fails. If your daily plan fails, your weekly plan fails. If your weekly plan fails, your monthly plan fails and you ultimately won't be able to reach the target that you intended to reach. So basically, not doing a task that is written on your to-do list is saying that I'm okay with not reaching the destination that I plan to be at. So you are actually going to use every last second. And a lot of people would be complaining about procrastination, wasting a lot of time. And these things can easily be solved by you having a plan, three layers of planning, long-term planning that is going to have months or years medium level planning that is going to see the next two, three months and the shortest term planning that is going to be your daily planning. The medium level planning will be having either your months or it is going to have the next upcoming weeks, but it is important to plan. I think I'm extremely clear for you guys. I made a full video like this in a concise manner so you get everything about how you should be planning. If there's any more doubts, Put it down in the comment section. I hope you learned a lot and I am hoping that you are going to apply from this very moment. That is the reason that I explained my experiences. I shared my ways and I also shared what are the various advantages of planning. It is absolutely a must, my friends. Otherwise, you are just moving in a wishy-washy world. Special thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. The link will be down in the description box. Go over there to get the free trial. It is a good platform for learning new things. And that's about it. I'm going to end this video over here. I'll see all of you in the next one. Till then, bye.